So we are excited that you're here today, that you made it out through the rain. You didn't melt on the way to church today. We welcome those who are watching online who were afraid they would melt in the rain coming to church today. It's always one of those iffy things about the rain, man. Either a lot of people go to church because of the rain or people stay home because of the rain. You never know. You never know. If it's cold rain or hot rain, time of the year. Um, so we were just praying that we would have an um, impact with the message that we were going to deliver today, whether at home or here in the campus. We're starting a brand new series called Family Meeting. Family Meeting. Growing up, did anybody in here have annual or biannual or weekly or whatever it was, family meetings where the whole family got together and had a talk. Okay, yep, a few, right. How many in here have never had a family meeting? Yep, same thing as first service. Well, growing up in the McKelvey house, we had family meetings, okay, family meetings. My dad generally would call the family meeting, and it was one of two things that he would call a family meeting for, Okay. One, he'd call a family meeting because there was a problem that needed to be corrected, right? And so as a family, we need to sit down and dad needed to lay out some family rules. Here's some things that I'm not happy with. We need to correct some things. Or he would have a family meeting if he wanted our input on like something like a family vacation. Okay, guys, we have an option. We could do uh, Disney, or we could go to Myrtle Beach. Which one you want to go? And we'd be like, Disney! And he'd be like, yeah, we're going to Myrtle Beach. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> Here's the thing about McKelvey family meetings. That you could say whatever you needed to say, whatever you wanted to say, whatever you were feeling at the family meeting. It was a safe moment if something was bothering you, if you were upset at someone in the family, you could say that at the family meeting. Now, if you had something to say, it had to be said at the family meeting. After the meeting was closed and my dad took out the hammer and hit the table, that never happened, but that was it. The family meeting was over, right? So it was good and bad because we would just bottle up some stuff that we were waiting for the family meeting so that we had some ammunition to go at it. Um, but it was good because we had an outlet as a family to discuss things that were happening in the home, that we were on the same page, that we were continuing in the same direction. And so today, I kind of want to bring you into this idea of a family meeting. I want to talk to talk to you about some things today in the Word of God that are like family matters, family things. And here's one of them. This is something that happened to my wife and I when we were dating early in our relationship. Again, now when I say that, my wife and I were engaged after three months of meeting. So it was pretty quick, all right? Uh, I, I think that we were engaged at the time. Uh, we we're talking about our future. We we're talking about life. And she informed me that she intended on hyphenating her name, all right? She was going to hyphenate her name. And so my wife is Hispanic and I'm Irish about the same thing. It's very, very close. <laughs> At least we have the same temper, right? So she tells me that she intends on hyphenating her name, and her maiden name was Serrano, so she was going to be Cynthia Serrano Dash McKelvey. And I informed her that if she intended on hyphenating her name, it would be Cynthia Serrano hyphen something else other than McKelvey. <laughs> now, Today's not a message about whether that's biblical or not. That's not the point here. All right, so don't get hung up on my dysfunction, all right? Don't get hung up on what I believe is an issue. That's not the point today. But it started a fight. Like, it started, like, there was crying, and there was weeping, and there was gnashing of teeth. <laughs> and there was some claws that came out in this, like, she was going to hyphenate her name. And culturally... That was her upbringing. It was completely what, I mean, Hispanic got like 22 last names, right? Like I, I, they got their confirmation name. They got the Catholic name. They got all that. I'm like, what in the world? Like my son's name is Michael, uh, jo uh, Liam, Joseph, Michael, Anthony, Stephen, Nicholas, Vincent. I mean, it goes on forever, all the names that he got. 
And I was like, that's not how we do in the McKelvey house. Like, if you want to be a McKelvey, then you're all in, right? You're all in or you're not in. That's just how it is. I'm not marrying you. And literally, it got to, I said, I'm not marrying you. It's done. Like, we're, we're it. That's it. it. It was that big of a deal to me. Well, she's like, but that's not fair. I don't have a middle name. And I said, well, that's your parents' fault. I'm just, this is totally, this is, this is, this actually happened, all right? Months later, months later, um, no, no, not months later, weeks later, she's like, okay, I have a compromise. I'm like, okay, here we go. She's like, because I don't have a middle name, I will be Cynthia S. Period McKelvey. And I was like, well, what does the S stand for? <laughs> does it stand for Serena? She's like, no, it's Serrano. I said, then I'm not marrying you. I said, but it's a compromise. Come on, meet me halfway. I said, there's no halfway here. Right? Anyway, it was a fight. It was a deal. I began to think about this thing in family matters. I began to think about this thing in Christianity. And as I was reading the Bible, I, I've been studying Peter. Peter had a name change when Jesus met him. I began to look and there was other people whose names changed in the Bible. Abram was changed to Abraham. His wife Sarai was changed to Sarah. Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. Saul, his name was changed to Paul. And there's a guy named Simon, Bar Jonah, Simon son of Jonah, whose name was changed to Peter. Right? I began to think about this name change in family meetings, right? She wants to have this compromise. And so it was a big fight. It was ugly. I had to think of something quick, right? Because this relationship was over. I said, listen, baby, I love that you don't have a middle name. She's like, why? I said, because it puts your name closer to my name. Dodge a bullet. <laughs> Family's difficult at times. Figuring this dating thing out, figuring what life is going to look like is difficult. Do you put the toilet paper on the roll over or under? Do you... S oh. <laughs> Do you squeeze the toothpaste in the middle or from the end? Yeah. Starts fights. Do you clean the ketchup off the lid of the bottle before you put it away? Yes, you better! That's nasty! Do you put your food in Tupperware or do you put the whole pot of rice in the fridge? Mira, que pasó? Who does that? Boricuas, obviously. It heats up better. Families are difficult. Planning families are even harder. Getting the right formula for success can take a long time. Couples go to counseling. They go to marriage seminars and conferences because they're looking to somebody else who has the ideal marriage that they could model. Show me what you've done to stay together for 40 years. And the truth is, it's just they didn't leave. There was no secret sauce. There was nothing special. They're just like, I looked in the mirror. I have no other options. I'm staying put. And as I was writing this series, I was thinking about these name changes. I was thinking about how real that fight was with my wife about names. And I began to think, when God changes a name, it indicates that something new has happened yes. or something new will happen to that person. Amen. A new relationship happens, a new character quality, a new phase of life 
is happening because of this name change. Just like when a wife takes her husband's name, it represents a new phase of life. It, it represents leaving father and mother, leaving that name and stepping into cleaving to a new name. It's a new season, a new life. And my favorite Bible story of a name change is Simon to Peter. Or if you, if you read it in your Bible, it's gonna say the word Kephas. Simon to Kephas. And Simon's original name in the Greek, Simon, means snub-nosed. Snub-nosed. My dad likes guns. He's got a, a, a gun. It's called a snub-nosed revolver. I mean, it's like it's got like a two-inch barrel, right? Snub-nosed. I just got a new dog. It's a French bulldog. It's got a snub-nose. Like, I think its nose is kind of inverted. You can't see it with all the wrinkles on its face. That's not a good name. That's not a cool name, like that your name means snub nose. <laughs> Do you know the meaning of your name? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important that you should know the meaning of your name. The name Simon is a derivative of the name Simeon. Now, Simeon's got a nice name. It means God has heard. God has heard. And Jesus changes Simon's name the second he meets him. The second Jesus meets Simon... He changes his name. In John 1, 42, he, he, uh, Andrew is, is his Peter. He introduces him to Jesus. He's like, oh, Jesus, you got me, my brother, Simon Bar-Jonah, uh, Simon, son of Jonah. And in verse uh, 42, it says this. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, son of Jonah? He's like, yes, sir. He's like, I'm going to call you Kephas. So I was just at a pastor's conference, right? Um, very, very small pastor's conference, intentional. And I got to meet some cool pastors. That's like me going up, hey man, I'm Mike McKelvey. Oh, you're Mike McKelvey? Mm, I'm gonna call you Fred. <laughs> uh, no, sir. <laughs> I'm Mike McKelvey. I'm, I'm pretty happy, like I'm pretty proud of my heritage. I'm pretty proud of my legacy. You know, I'm Michael, son of Joseph. Right? If we were in a different culture, my name would be Michael Josephson. Right? Michael Joseph's son. I'm pretty proud what the McKelvey name has accomplished. You know, my dad's a junior. And, and, and we're proud that Joseph Sr., Joseph Jr., Michael McKelvey, Liam, like that we have a good legacy, what we've been able to do in the kingdom of God with our name. I wouldn't walk in and somebody like, you're Mike McKelvey? No, nope, you're Fred Jones. Uh, no, sir. I'm good. Like, who do you think you are, bro? Are you going to just straight up change my name? And he changes my name from like a derivative of Simeon. God has heard to, you're a stone. <laughs> Kephas means stone. In fact, it actually means that you're a pebble. You're not even like a big rock. You're not even like a boulder. You're a pebble. Right? Could you imagine that kind of thing happening today? But what we don't understand, and get this, here's the big idea. Jesus needed to change his identity so that he could change his destiny. Amen. He needed to change his identity so he could change his destiny. Peter's destiny right now was to be a fisherman. If you know anything about the history of what would ha be happening in this time, if someone was a fisherman, it, it was because their dad was a fisherman and their grandfather was a fisherman and their great-grandfather was a fisherman. And most likely we believe that Peter was like the business owner. He, he took over the family business. And Jesus walks in, he's like, no, you're a fisherman, but I'm gonna make you a fisher of men. Yeah. I'm changing everything about you. I'm changing your destiny. I'm changing your identity. Right? The Lord saw past Simon's or Peter's imperfections to what he could be, what he was called to be, what the divine design for his life was supposed to be. And I'm going to tell you today that God can see past your current condition. God can see past your current situation. God can see past your current imperfections, and he's calling out the greatness that he has placed inside of you. 
He sees the greatness that he's placed in you, and he's trying to call that out of you. And some of us just haven't adopted the new identity. The Bible tells us that God will give you a new name, and I think that there's so much more to life than what we've settled for right now. I think there's so much more to life than what we've settled for right now. Jesus sees in you what can be regardless of what you currently are. Jesus sees what can be, what can be, what you can do, what you're called to do if you would let him do a work in your life. God knows what you are and he loves you just the same. If the church can get that, if the church can get that revelation, God knows exactly what you are and he loves you just the same. Right? End of story. That's it. End of story. But I like to add something to that story. But he loves you too much to leave you in that current condition. In Philippians 1, 6, he says, be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. God's not like me. I start six projects at once and don't finish any of them. Anybody? Wives? I'll ask the wives. Did your husband do that? No? He's good? He's faithful to complete? I'm by myself right now. I think sometimes we know people. We know people. Somebody else. It's not me. We know other people who start something and then don't finish it and you're waiting for the trim in the kitchen to get nailed up. It's all cut sitting there, but just haven't got the nail gun out to put up trim up or did something, never painted it, whatever. And we think that God, okay, yeah, God started something. I prayed a prayer of salvation, but when's it ever going to be completed? Is he still working on it? Has he given up? Has he started somebody else's project and forgot about me? No, the Bible says be confident that he's faithful to complete the work that he started in you. Yes. Here's the real deal. Whoever trusts in Jesus, the one who is the, say this with me, name above all names. Name above all names. He's the name above all names, right? He's the name, his name is the name above all names. The name of God, the name of Jesus is the name above all names. That at salvation, at an encounter with Jesus Christ, we receive a new name, we get adopted into a family, and we receive the name that's above all names. We, we actually receive the name of God. So, so at the moment of salvation, I'm no longer Michael, son of Joseph. I'm now Michael, son of God. Son of God. There's a name change, right? A new life, a new purpose, a new destiny. Look what the book of Revelation promises us. He says this, I will give him a new name written on a stone which no one knows but he who receives it. Yo, I love me some spy, secret agent, movies. That means I got a black ops name. I got a secret identity that only me and God know. So when he calls out to me and is like, yo, white falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> Nobody knows who White Falcon is but me. It's a special name, right? Special name. Growing up, growing up, my mom had nicknames for me. I had, I had several nicknames, depending on the situation, but... One of, them, one of them was the most special nickname to me. And I'm going to embarrass myself today. I'm going to let you know what my mom used to call me. And my mom used to call me her itty-bitty buddy. <laughs> right? Her itty-bitty buddy. Now, itty-bitty buddy, that was not the name that she shouted out when I was playing soccer. She wasn't like, yo, itty-bitty buddy, get the go. 
Like that wasn't the name that she would use in front of people. Like itty bitty buddy was like late at night when I was in my bed and I had a hard day. And she'd come in, she'd sit at the end of my bed and she'd say, you know I love you, my itty bitty buddy. <laughs> Even today, like around Christmas, She'll make me sit on her lap and she'll scratch my back. And she'll say, are you always going to be my itty bitty buddy? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because that's mom, right? But that's like that secret name that that's not, nobody else in the world is her itty bitty buddy. Like that's reserved for me. I don't have a brother, right? I don't got to share I don't got to share mom's attention when it comes to being her son. I'm the itty bitty buddy. And that's what it says here. A new name will be written on the stone. And the only one who's going to know what it is is you and God. You know your secret ops name. The thing he's called you to be. be, The thing he's called you to do. He goes on to say this. I will write on him the name of my God. Yo, we get stamped with the name of God. Like, he puts in us, son of God. Like, our name is now in the family of God. Look what he says here. I will write on them the name of God and the name of the city of my God and New Jerusalem, which came down from heaven from my God, and my new name. He's even saying, listen, I'm going to take on a new name as we move forward and build this relationship. I love that. Your new name is either going to be the name of Jesus himself or perhaps like Peter, Jesus will give you a brand new name that represents the change he has brought about in you. So many of us have been walking around with names that other people have placed on us. Shy, ugly, stupid, addict, whatever it is, mean, angry, nasty, unlovable, accident, mistake. There's these names that we've carried around. Come on. And when God comes in to your life, he wants all those previous identities to fade away. And he wants you to accept the new identity in him. Peter's name was Simon Bar-Jonah or Simon, son of Jonah. His new name is Peter, son of God. Kephas, son of God. And here's where I find the issue. We as children of God, we try to hold on to our old name. We try to hold on to our old identity. Well, I want this new identity But can I hyphenate it? (laughs) Can I hyphenate my Christian name? Can I be Christian on Sunday, but the hyphenated part Monday through Saturday? I want some of what you're saying. Not sure I want all of it. Not sure I want the full commitment. Because what happens if it don't work out? What happens if it don't work out? Now I'm stuck with the name that's not my name. Then I got to go change all the paperwork again. That's such a hassle. Got to go to Newburg. <laughs> the word Lord, making Jesus Christ your Lord, means master. Yeah. Means Savior, means boss, means leader. It means that you've completely bought in. Like you're drinking the Kool-Aid, right? You're drinking the Kool-Aid. You're in. You're all in to what God has. You're not hyphenating this thing. You're not, you're not separating, well, I'm still me, and Christianity's kind of what I do. No. At salvation, Christianity is who I am. It's who I am. 
My name has been changed. I have a new identity and I have a new destiny, right? The old identity, the old labels are gone. But instead of accepting his name, well, I like my name. I'm a movie star. I can't take someone else's name. My name is known. Well, I've got my professional name. I can't let my professional name go because I'm successful. I'm self-made. Everybody knows my professional name. How weird would it be? I go into work and now I got this new name. Nobody knows me by that name. Well, what a great opportunity to tell them how much you love your spouse. What a great opportunity to let people know that you're in a new season of life, that you've started afresh. But, but we don't. We, we hold on. We hold on. And in Christianity, we hold on. I'm just a sinner, saved by grace. I'm going to hold on to this old identity because I know that I do bad behavior. It's just, no, I'm a child of God. I mess up sometimes, but I'm a child of God. Here's what I love about the story. There's a second encounter that Peter has with Jesus. It's in the book of Matthew 16. Peter and Jesus, the disciples are there. Now this is in front of people. And Jesus says to Peter, who do people say that I am? He's like, what's the word on the street? What are people labeling me as? He says, well, some say you're a prophet. Some say you're the Messiah. Some say you're Elias. Some say you're a magician. People are just all confused. They don't really know who you are. They know you're doing some cool stuff. But that's the label of the world. That's what the world is saying. That's what people are saying. And Jesus says, okay, but who do you say that I am? You've been with me. You've seen me. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered him and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now watch what Jesus says to him. Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. He calls him by his old name. He calls him by his street name. He calls him by what everybody else was calling him. He calls him by his past. He calls him by his birth name. Right? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for bl- flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. This isn't something that you came up with on your own. You didn't think about this. He says, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. You're speaking right now out of a new name. You're speaking now out of a new destiny. You're speaking now out of new purpose. You're speaking now out of what I've called out of you right? My father gave you this revelation. He says, and so I say unto you that you are Peter. Now I'm calling you by the name I gave you. You are Peter, son of God. And upon this rock, right? So you were a pebble. I I named you pebble. But this revelation you have is a rock. This revelation, you just called me the Christ, the Son of the living God. You just made me the chief cornerstone, the Bible says, that the builders rejected. That all of the faith of Christianity is built on the stone, on the foundation that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Lord, the Son of the living God. He says, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of heaven. Listen, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Simon couldn't do any of that, but Peter can. Simon was weak in his imperfections. Peter is the anointed one called out by God. And we don't accept the name change we don't accept the new position we don't accept the new calling we live powerless lives 
Christianity doesn't work if it's only visited on a Sunday. This isn't, this isn't a split family. This isn't partial visitation rights on Sundays only. We have a new name. There's no divorce in this family. There's no divorce in this family. There's no fear of being left. There's no fear of being rejected. This family, it's an eternal family that we're called to by God. He says, I put my name on you. Mm. Peter, son of God, has the revelation that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. I just ask today, have you accepted a name change? Have you accepted the name of God into your life? that you are, whatever your first name is, son of God, child of God, because that changes everything. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different that I don't normally do. I think some of us have lived hyphenated Christianity. Let me change like this. We've lived compromise Christianity. I have a compromise for you, let's just put an S. We've lived this compromised Christianity like, well, let's just make a deal, God. I want the name, but I still want to have some fun. And then we got to describe why is that behavior fun, right? Because mowing the lawn to me is fun. Like what defines fun now anyway? We've lived compromised Christianity. We lived hyphenated Christianity where I want a lot of it, but I'm not sure that I'm sold to all of it. And tonight, today, maybe you need a fresh start. Maybe you need a fresh start. Maybe you've been living the hyphenated Christian life. That I'm kind of in, but I'm not in. I kind of do something like we pray for dinner, but I'm not committed yet I'm not serving the body of Christ I'm not using my talents my giftings my abilities my resources to further the kingdom of God I'm just kind of observing church and watching and seeing I think today could be a connection moment today could be that moment that you connect in faith to say okay this was the day that I kind of got serious about my Christianity that I got serious about my walk with God and so here at Family Church, we want to make it very simple. So there's two, two offers this morning. If you need a fresh start, you want to say, today's a day. I'm making a connection moment as a fresh start. Or I've never even started this Christian life. I've been watching. I've been observing. But I know today I need a change in my life. I have not had joy. I have not had peace. I have not had rest. I'm angry. Everything overwhelms me. I need this, and you said that God will complete a work that he starts. I need this work started in my life. I need something new. So for two, two, two things, fresh start or new start, we're going to pray today. And here at Family Church, it's a simple prayer to have that happen in your life. And we all pray together. We'll say, Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life to change me and to make me new thank you for accepting me in Jesus name amen amen so real quick we're not going to take any more time but if you made a fresh start today or a new start today would you just wave at me real quick say hey man that was me right there awesome 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 all over the room all over the room Fresh start, new start, amen, amen. You know, I kind of make it a practice in my life to make fresh starts quite often. I say, you know what, I've, I've been losing my focus, I've been losing my, my, my connection, I need to make a fresh start, and I'll say, okay, it was this day, just like a diet, right? You, you log the day you started a new diet. Okay, I'm gonna commit to something new, I'm gonna commit to working on an area of my life. Awesome, 
proud of you. Amen. There's a book on the seat back in front of you that talks about Christianity, what we believe here at Family Church. There's also a connection card. If you'd fill that out uh, and drop it at one of the high top tables, we will follow up on you and give you what a next step might be for your life. Okay? Maybe you've been a Christian for a while and you've never been water baptized. That might be a next step for your life. Maybe you've been water baptized but you've not connected with the church then maybe we could put you in a small group or we could put you on a serve team where you can use your giftings and talents and abilities to serve the local church maybe you you, uh, have been coming to church and you don't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit we could lead you into what that looks like maybe you've never trusted God with your finances and you need to know about tithing maybe we could teach you about that as well so whatever your next step is there's always a next step maybe you come to church once a month maybe we can encourage you to be a regular attender two to three times a month. We would love to see that in your life and see you continually grow and mature, amen? Father, we thank you today for a word in season for us speaking to our hearts and into our lives. Your word will never return to you void, but will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. Lord, I pray today that no one leaves here hung up on the fact that I had a fight about hyphenating a name. That that wasn't the point of the sermon today, God. The point of the message today is accepting your name, the name that's above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess you as Lord. So we thank you today. And we leave here, everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you.